Hello, every, hello everybody. I'm Jussi Halmatia from Sweden, representing Saab Aeronautics. It's uh, my pleasure to be back here in, in Colombia, beautiful Bogota. Uh, um, slight my background, uh, why I'm here. Uh, I'm here to support uh, uh, our business opportunities in Colombia uh, with my background of uh, being a frontline fighter pilot in the Swedish Air Force for almost 25 years where I've uh, flown uh, uh, various kinds of, uh, of aircraft, the begins and all versions of Gripen. Uh, throughout my career I've had different jobs. I've been a weapons instructor, uh, I've been a test pilot, so uh, done uh, uh, staff tours in various weapon integration and capability uh, development programs in the fighter uh, aircraft domain. Uh, so uh, uh, flying background wise, uh, close to 2,500 hours. Uh, when I was a test pilot, I've had the opportunity, the privilege of flying most of the uh, modern Western fighters and trainers, such as Rafael, Eurofighter, F-16, F-15s and many others. So that's me, uh, uh, in, very briefly. I'm here today to talk about equipment capabilities and how that relates to Latin America, Colombia, uh, and uh, what our uh, concept of delivering air power is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question and uh, that's uh, really in the essence of things why we are here. Uh, we see a, a growing asymmetry in, in Latin America and, uh, and Colombia where uh, Air Force is needing new equipment. Uh, uh, we have a fighter product which is the most modern aircraft uh, flown first time in 2017. It's designed for a small to medium sized Air Force such as Colombia, such as many other Air Forces in the world today where we bring uh, unique modern fighting capability technology uh, uh, a way to operate uh, to a new 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 way altogether uh, we are very available we are cost efficient we are credible and sustainable um, so we think this is a perfect fit for a country like colombia uh, uh, and many other countries in the region what? That's a really great question and the simple answer is really that uh, this kind of threat, uh, the Russian yeah. legacy yeah. systems, uh, fighters, uh, bombers, surface term missile system radars, this is exactly the kind of threat that could be yeah. yeah. and other Swedish systems have been designed to, to beat. Uh, so that means that we have very powerful uh, electronic warfare so we can jam these radar systems, uh, survive deliver operation effect. We have long range, high efficient uh, weapons that are better than the ad adversaries. Uh, we have a very smart way of using uh, new tactics with networking because in every case we will always have fewer aircraft than the enemy. So we have to be smarter to achieve local air superiorities using superior tactics, superior weapons, uh, having very highly available systems so we can counter and neutralize the neutralize threat in our nation. Great question. So, uh, the uh, multi-domain operations of today uh, requires uh, connectivity, which you achieve by tactical data links. So sharing and receiving information, not only uh, within uh, a formation of aircraft such as equipment, but also to send and receive information to other platforms. It can be command and control platforms, but also uh, naval ships. It can be uh, ground-based air defense units. It can be army units. Uh, and we have been working with these uh, tech data link systems uh, in our platform since early 70s, if not even earlier than that, as the first nation in the world where we've had different uh, solutions for that. So depending on the Colombian requirement, we can deliver uh, sovereign systems such as other equipment operators, uh, examples Brazil, Thailand have. Uh, we can also deliver data link solutions, connectivity, which are 
interoperable with allies such as NATO and US. So it's really up to the Colombian requirement uh, and demand, uh, and we are ready to deliver. Yeah, the range and endurance, uh, it's uh, kind of a, for us human beings, uh, a physical factor which we can visualize easily. But I would say uh, range and endurance is really about what is the task or the mission that your platform is supposed to do. So if you have a large aircraft with two engines, uh, that uh, you can visualize it and you think that it's going to be flying faster, higher, longer, but it has two engines, it has a lot bigger drag, so it doesn't automatically mean that this larger aircraft will be more efficient in the combat. Because now, uh, I mentioned it in earlier uh, earlier question, first question, where you now develop new tactics with data link, special functions where you share information. So uh, tactics is changing, where we see uh, platforms that fly fast, high, for long periods of time, is no longer the winning concept in modern aerial combat. We want to be smarter. Uh, and not really be bound by the physical uh, kind of sizes and formats that you have. Yep, that's uh, another brilliant question. And uh, how do you design your platforms and your equipment to withstand all kinds of temperatures and all kinds of environments. Uh, and we follow a very rigid uh, worldwide climate uh, standards, uh, engineering standards. So uh, uh, the aircraft is certified to be in the very cold, in the very hot, the very humid. Uh, and we have demonstrated many times that uh, we are uh, up to the standards. So we have, uh, um, Thailand is one uh, group and operator which has a very hot tropical climate. Brazil, uh, another one. So uh, this is not an issue in modern uh, fighter platforms today uh, any longer. It might have been the earlier systems, but uh, the modern technology takes care of all these challenges today. I think it's about uh, uh, what is your nation's doctrine. Normally most nations want to defend their nations. So you want to create credible, sustainable and cost-efficient offensive air posture, so the combat power that your, your fighter jets want to do. And you want to do that to solve your military problem, to neutralize uh, a threat against your borders. Uh, so you uh, need to have uh, a number of aircraft, maybe you can afford 20, 30, 40, which is a nominal number but to keep them uh, available. So you can fly them every day. You can fly six, eight, ten aircraft, five, six times a day, day in, day out, day three, day four, for 14 days, for 21 days. And this is where we have uh, developed group to be able to do. So you can neutralize the threat. And also the second and last one I would say here, the flexibility to operate your aircraft from uh, almost anywhere, from uh, smaller airstrips, from highways, that's what will uh, give you the, uh, the ability to neutralize the threat. Long question, long answer, but it's an important, <laughs> important one. So uh, it's a little bit about the first thing I'll say about that question, which is a very important one, is to again focus on how the tactics and how the air combat is changing with network, connectivity, smart functions, where uh, it's been for 30, 40 years, the aircraft that flies the highest, the fastest, the longest will win. That's no longer true. Uh, everything is now changing. Mm -hmm. uh, we get uh, also the question of uh, validation of, is the equipment really combat proven? Uh, it's a strange aircraft that lives in northern Sweden somewhere. Yes. Uh, but uh, that's not really true either. So. Uh, we've uh, used the Gripen for about 15 years. Uh, two NATO operators, Czech and Hungary, now Sweden, uh, are using this uh, aircraft every day to patrol borders against uh, a Russian threat. Uh, 2011, we had an operation uh, in uh, when uh, Libya was burning with uh, Mr. Gaddafi of making trouble. Uh, 
uh, there was uh, allied operations uh, uh, in uh, the Mediterranean where Gripen participated out of Signal Air Base doing waves into uh, northern Africa, Libya, two or three times a day over seven months. So I would like to say that uh, that uh, must be proof enough that we can do the mission and we can integrate and we can, uh, we can deliver uh, the effect that is needed.